Hi, I am Vin, and standing here today on stage is just as frightening as it was about nine years ago when I decided to leave my well-paying corporate job to get on the journey of starting Brand Hero. Back then, it was my passion and my dream. But if I look at this position today, how far I have come, but it also scares me of what lies ahead. But it is good scary. Uh, so I'm grateful for the support and my struggles to uh, probably nurture and grow Brand Hero to what it is today. But leaving my then seven-year-old career to start something entirely new was not easy. It was, uh, it was a very uncertain and a very difficult decision to make. Just like we are in uncertain times today. So I had to go back to my family. I had discussion with my dad and everyone to kind of help me out, you know, of what are my options and how can I start something new. So just like when AI hit us, hit the industry a few years ago, we, uh, there was a lot of excitement and nervousness, nervousness all around. And we were actually excited and nervous at the same time. And we were nervous about, okay, what the revolution could mean for us how the industry, what the future lies for us. So there are so many different things happening. I could do this, I could do that. We lose jobs and whatnot, especially in the design industry. So actually, I, I was filled with so, so much anxiety that it almost killed me. So like, like before, I went back to my dad and I had a conversation with him, which opened my eyes. So I was talk, telling my dad about, you know, that, hey, the AI systems are coming up and they're going to take, us job, take, take away our job, they'll do things on their own and what is possible, whether we'll be relevant or not as designers and whatnot. So he recollected his past and he told, okay, back in the 80s, you know, 90s when computers were very new. And uh, so my dad is from the accounting background. So he said, especially bank tellers and accountants, they were, they were really skeptical to use these systems. They felt computers are going to take, to take away their jobs and they really hated these systems. Uh, but we all know that computers really did not just make the work faster, but it also made them much more efficient. And AI is just here for that. Computer did cut a lot of jobs though back then, but the way it revolutionized the industry, the way it changed the whole working world, the way it led businesses to scale where it is, we are all aware of that. So it's really inspiring to see, okay, what does AI hold for us in future? Let us look at the basics of a computer. So it consists of three parts. Uh, an input, it does some processing, and it gets, gives us an output. Despite having a huge array of data being in its formation, generative AI still has a very limited set of data set in its, in its input bank. So AI can't beat us until it is the great Chitty robot. So until we have the Chitty robot at our disposal, we adapt and modify things to get the desired output. What I mean to say, when we're using systems like ChatGPT, when we're using systems like Framer, uh, Midjourney, and Ubizard, there's so many different tools out there coming. The, 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 the default templates and responses that they give us is not something to our liking. We would like to go back, change it, and suit it to our needs. We have to go back to the input so that it processes something right and gets us the right output. And I have to make these modifications to make sure that I get something, I can make something bigger than my imagination, just like RCB winning an IPL. A far-fetched possibility, I know, yeah. But. So, so, UI UX is, so AI and UI UX is not just here to you know, make things pretty, but also make things magical, just like this image. The whole story behind um, UI UX is actually one of the, one of the, there's so many things, the time is limited, I'll touch upon the user analytics part. What if, as UX designers, when we, when we are expected to make designs, when we are making those screens, what is the underlying goal? There's a goal we are trying to serve, right? The maximum engagement, the most converting screens, and the designs which could probably hook the, hook the users to use it the most in the best possible way. What if there's a way for us to figure out, hey, you know, this design that we are going to be making is going to be really effective. It's going to be having all the aspects of a best converting design possible. And that's what businesses are hiring designers for, and they want these designs to perform. They want designs to convert. So there are tools out there, which are, these are very nascent tools, just a few names here, but uh, what if there are, so as we go ahead, there'll be far-fetched tools in terms of, you know, telling us exactly even while we are designing that, hey, this design is going to be performing really nice. This, this design is the focus of the attention, the focus of the, it predicts the average user movement. It tells you, okay, where the focus will be, where the most clicks will be received. And based on that, while designing itself, we can really make, come up with designs which are far more effective and far more converting from before. 
Not only this, as AI advances, not just predicting, it will also tell us, it will suggest us also what kind of could change in the design so that it could perform better. For example, make this button larger, change the font, and also change the color. This could result in this button cl being clicked by 50% more, something like that. So it is also important to note how these systems have been in place for years, such as Spotify. We, a lot of us, you know, we use this tool here. I'm sure we a lot of, a lot of us using Spotify here. Have you ever imagined how is it able to generate the hyper-personal playlist feature? So whenever you open the app, you get presented with a certain type of playlists for you, depending on what your needs are, how you listen to the music. So what, what it does is, so they, they have an ML system behind, you know, which works. And this ML system is trying to gather data on your listening history, how you've been, uh, what kind of songs are you listening to? What your profile history has been? What you have been, uh, you know, how you've been using the app in general? There are hundreds of such parameters. The principles at Spotify, they say that they're not making one app. They're making 500 million versions of the app. That's the number of users Spotify today has. And everybody gets presented with their own version of the app the moment they open the app every time. So it's like, thanks to personalization. This immense amount of personalization is only happening by the help of these systems and these data is getting collected in the backend. So what they do is they internally have a matrix of uh, sorts, you know, where they try to place users depending on these parameters, okay, how they bucket. This is a very simplified indicator version of that kind of a matrix, you know, where, uh, so after listening about their, after learning about their history and their song preferences, the system makes a persona of yours and it tries to uh, put you in one of these lists so that, so if you're listening to Kishore Kumar a lot more or if you're listening to Rafi Sahab, so when you next time open the app, you get presented to something like Timeless Gold Classics or Old is Gold, something like that. Or if you are a more adventurous listener who is listening to songs from all the honors, it is taking from all the data. And the next time when you're entering, it's showing you something like Discover Weekly, which is a playlist which is having songs from all the honors. So, so the, the, advanced, the, the future, what it lies for us is not just these systems. The, the when AI, as AI, AI evolves, we'll see these systems being used widely by all the systems out there, by many more companies out there. And a, a whole new world can be explored by using AI to predict the user behavior and preferences. Just like Netflix, another example here. So precision of suggesting what to watch next is next level here. It, the, com the algorithm, the company's famous algorithm to suggest what to watch, even the thumbnail it shows, okay, where you are most likely to click more, is predicted to save billions of dollars for the company already. And it is, it is letting users, it shows the user what they really want to see. It shows which, what kind of, based on their history, based on their preferences, based on what they have done in the past, it tries to show where you are most likely to click and engage with the, com with the content. So, but you know, if you're scared that, you know, systems are going to be taking over us and they're going to be, you know, doing a lot more on their own. So I think one very important factor is, is so there's nothing to worry, I would say, because to add any magic like these companies are doing, the human touch and empathy are highly needed. And the key word here is empathy. So systems are not, the AI can give you a response for your prompt, but it cannot have a response tailored to your exact needs. Just like we have taken on the good scary moment of the past, AI is part of that journey. It's like a co-pilot helping you push the boundaries of, the what, of what we can achieve. As we look at AI's incredible journey and its impact on industries and user experiences, let's pause to value the heart of innovation. AI's story isn't just about fancy tech and futuristic design ideas. It proves the human's ability to adapt, be curious, and push ahead. The world keeps changing and reminding us that change often comes with challenges, doubts, and self and bold steps. Like how we faced the exciting fear when we started something new, we are now at the edge of tomorrow, where AI and our creativity shapes new horizons. If this is the new era of UI UX, then it's definitely a game on. Thank you.